Nine million children die every year before they reach the age of five. Okay, picture picture a, a, an Asian tsunami of the sort we saw in 2004 that killed a quarter of a million people. One of those every 10 days, killing children only under five. Okay, it's 20, 24,000 children a day, 1,000 an hour, 17 or so a minute. That means before I can get to the end of this sentence, some few children, very likely, will have died in terror and agony. Think, think of the parents of these children. Think of the fact that, that most of these men and women believe in God and are praying at this moment for their children to be spared. And their prayers will not be answered. Any God who would allow children by the millions to suffer and die in this way, and their parents to grieve in this way, either can do nothing to help them, or doesn't care to. He is therefore either impotent or evil. Most of these people, many of these people certainly, will be going to hell because they're praying to the wrong God. Just think about that. Okay, through no fault of their own, they were born into the wrong culture, where they got the wrong theology, and they missed the revelation. Okay, there, there are 1.2 billion people in India at this moment. Most of them are Hindus, most of them therefore polytheists. So God created the cultural isolation of the Hindus. Okay, he engineered the circumstance of their deaths in ignorance of revelation. And then he created the penalty for this ignorance, which is an eternity of conscious torment in fire. Okay, on the other hand, on Dr. Craig's account, your run-of-the-mill serial killer in America, okay, who, who spent his life raping and torturing children, need only come to God, come to Jesus on death row, and after a final meal of fried chicken, he's going to spend an eternity in heaven after death. Okay, one thing should be crystal clear to you. This vision of life has absolutely nothing to do with moral accountability. Please notice the double standard that people like Dr. Craig use to, to exonerate God from all this evil. Okay, we're told that God is loving and kind and just and intrinsically good, but when someone like myself points out the ob rather obvious and compelling evidence that God is cruel and unjust because he visits suffering on innocent people of a scope and scale that would, would embarrass the most ambitious psychopath, we're told that God is mysterious. Okay, who can understand God's will? You know, something good happens to a Christian. Some, he feels some bliss while praying, say. Or he sees some positive change in his life. And we're told that God is good. Okay, but when children by the tens of thousands are torn from their parents' arms and drowned, we're told that God is mysterious. This is how you play tennis without the net. Okay, and I want to suggest to you that it is not only tiresome when otherwise intelligent people speak this way, it is morally reprehensible. This kind of faith is, is really is the perfection of narcissism. I mean, God loves me, don't you know? He, he cured me of my eczema. Given, given the, the misery that's being imposed on some helpless child at this instant, this kind of faith is obscene. Okay, this, to think in this way is to fail to reason honestly or to care sufficiently about the suffering of other human beings. We're being offered a psychopathic and psychotic moral attitude. It's psychotic because this is completely delusional. There's no reason to believe that we live in a universe ruled by an invisible monster, Yahweh. But it is, it is psychopathic because this is a total detachment from the, from the well-being of human beings. It, this so easily rationalizes the slaughter of children. Okay, it allows perfectly decent and sane people to believe by the billions what only lunatics could believe on their own.